I don't know if there's if there was more anxiety last night in the 10th inning of the World Series or now for this next week leading up to the election. What do you expect? Do you think there will be smooth sailing over the next uh, six days as we head towards next Tuesday? Well, if the pass is any indication, it seems like there's always a new leak or some new event that happens almost on a daily basis, particularly in the cybersecurity world, whether it's emails found on somebody's servers or it's new emails that are leaked given uh, some of the breaches that took place. So I think it's going to be an interesting run up to the election. So David Sanger had a nice piece in the New York Times kind of outlining the possibilities over the next week. And one of your colleagues at CrowdStrike had a quote in the piece saying that he thought the ultimate intent of hackers was not to change the results, that's obviously far-fetched, mm -hmm. but to discredit the election, to throw a kind of question mark over the results. Do you think that's right, and what are the possible ways they might do that? Well, I think in general, when you look at what transpired and some of the work that we've done, and, and certainly some of the work that the government has done to come out and, and, and uh, name Russia as one of the actors involved here, I think that's part of the, the mode of operation that's been done in the past. Cyber is, is just a new medium, but in the past, whether it was in the, you know, uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, it, it was a similar uh, methodology in terms of trying to introduce chaos where you can. And this is just another way to do that through cyber. So I think um, if we look at the election and we look at what's been done so far, I mean, you know, people are asking the question, is it Russia, is it not Russia, what's going to happen, what does it all mean, are the elections going to be hacked or, or not? And it's a talking point, I think, that helps to sometimes destabilize what's going on. Has Russia done this in the past? I know there was some suggestion that maybe they got involved in the Ukrainian elections with similar tactics. Talk a little bit about what happened in those previous uh, elections and, and whether that might give us a, a guidepost for this next week. Well, they're a very capable adversary, uh, certainly very good on the cyber side, which is one of the things you know we see all the time when we're investigating these sort of activities. And, um, you know, their, their method of operation at, hasn't necessarily changed. The, the medium has changed, right? So they're now more focused on cyber because they don't have to necessarily leave the comfort of their chair. Um, but, you know, when you look at the, the methods, uh, whether it's a piece of malware or whether it's a phishing attack, uh, it's all available uh, on the Internet and they're taking advantage of all that data. Is it simple enough to say that they are uh, trying to support the candidacy of Donald Trump, or are they basically trying to throw the U.S. election system itself into chaos? Well, like most governments, they collect lots of information. If you look at all the emails, whether they're classified or not classified, uh, things like collecting um, what's happening behind the scenes and understanding where the wind is blowing is very important for them. So that collection mechanism is not necessarily unique. It's what you do with that data. And I think what has been very unique in this case is the fact that it now has ended up on the Internet and people are free to look at it, and does that influence the election one way or another? We'll see. So every American voter that uh, turns out next Tuesday and goes to an electronic voting machine, and now that's a, a vast majority of voters, mm -hmm. is going to wonder in the back of their minds, is this voting machine safe? Is that unequivocally a yes right now, or is there still some question in your mind? Well, I think the question is, is the voting process safe? And if you look at what happens in the voting process, a lot of it is still manual. There's certainly electronic voting systems, and those are always susceptible to attack. I think there's a lot of eyes that have been put on this. But in general, it's so manual that, um, you know, statistically, the voting system is not necessarily going to be impacted uh, by hack and change the election. How about voter rolls? Is there some possibility that a voter turns out and they're not registered to vote or they turned up at the wrong place because of some kind of tinkering from, uh, from outside the country? Well, I think that's always a possibility. If you look at how easy it is to actually break into these systems and, and sort of uh, the lack of security that exists in the, in the environment today from, from legacy technology, it's very easy to get in. And could they manipulate those, those sort of uh, roles? Absolutely. Um, will it happen? Will it make a meaningful difference? Don't know.